In this second <clears throat> Drupal uh, tutorial video, I'm going to create a, I'm going to demonstrate the use of content types, uh, the addition of content, uh, the automatic creation of content, and the use of views. Um, and to do all of this, or most of this, if not all of it, we won't be writing any any code for this. So actually, at the moment I've got a Sublime text open um, from the from the last tutorial of where we installed Drupal. Now I'm gonna just gonna close that down because we don't need it. Um, what we do have is our terminal window. Um, when we installed Drupal, uh, we used um, we used Fansible to create a configuration file um, that used Vagrant, Ansible, and VirtualBox to create me a development environment. And as part of that, we added um, Drush to the server packages. Um, and Drush is a command line utility for Drupal. Uh, it basically allows you to run a lot of the um, kind of commands that you would run in the GUI, you can run them from the from the command line. And this is this is really useful for running a variety of things. We're going to use it for downloading and installing modules. Um, so this is my this is my server that's running. Um, it gives me the option straight from the from the from the default installation to to add new content, and by default it gives me two. Uh, different types of content that I can add, an article or a basic page. Uh, and if we just look at those those two things, um, uh, an article gives me a gives me a title, it allows me to add um, uh, uh, tags, it lets me write uh, the article body um, and I'll just I'll just save that uh, and it gives me that. If I I'm going to open in a new tab, I'm going to open up uh, another um, addition, and I'm going to um, add a basic page. Uh, so it's called basic page title, uh, basic body text, and that's it. Notice it doesn't give us the option here to add add tags like it gave us in the other one. Uh, and if we save that. There we've got our basic page. The basic page just has title and it has a body. Because I'm logged in, it gives me the option to view and edit it. If I was logged out, it would just give me the content. I wouldn't see this navigation. Um, and if we compare that to the um, the article, the article has a, has a title, it's got a submitted by and then my name, it's got a date and, and time, uh, it's got the article body, it's got the tags, and it's got the, the ability to comment. Uh, and if I wasn't logged in, it would probably give me something still around the kind of commenting, either asking to register first or something like that. But it's essentially what we're saying here, we've got two content types um, by default, and one is, is, is essentially a, a kind of blog blog entry type, and one's just a sort of normal page-based content. So that, that, that's really all, and, and there are two examples of content types. Content types are just ways of taking your content that may be organized, kind of like arranged differently, you might want to have different fields associated with a different content type. So it's just ways of kind of just defining how you want your content to look. So you might, for example, create a content type for a, for a staff profile, and that might allow you to add an image or something like that, you know, whatever it is, or, you know, a job title or something like that. So content types are just ways of representing your, your, your content. As a, from a developer perspective, you know, it's like if you created a class to represent, you know, with this thing and a class to represent a different thing. Um, the difference here is that a content type will always produce some form of web-based output. You're always going to see a URL with content on it. Um, so, with that, um, with the article created, with the basic page created. Um, let's just go and have a look and see what those, yeah, what's what, what's actually kind of un, under the hood there. So if we look at the the structure, um, okay, stepping back a, a moment within the Drupal admin. So we're logged in. If we if we're not logged in, if we're logged out, we don't see and we don't see the navigation. We just got to log in. There's the article. In fact, it tells us to log in or register if we want to add comments. Um, 
Uh, in fact, we can't even see the basic page here. We actually have because it's not linked from anywhere. So if we add node two to that, we can see there's our basic page, but there's not an attachment to it to a navigation. But it does give us our, our login box. So I'm going to log into that, and because this is the um, the admin user, it gives me this kind of fancy menu at the top here. Across here, it's got a few little sh you know, shortcuts here for add content and find content. But essentially, under here, you've got content, which is where you manage content from. Structure, where you can manage the blocks on the site, which are where chunks of content get placed around, uh, notably the sidebars, header, footer, that kind of area. Content types, which are the articles and pages, or anything else you want to kind of create there. Menus are the ways of navigating the site, and you know you can add menus to different places. Uh, you can you know add a menu to a block or you know whatever you want to do. And taxonomies are a bit like tags. You know, tags is one example of of, of a taxonomy. It's a way of classifying your content. <coughs> Uh, appearance is all really around your themes, and so you can switch themes here. Um, and if, you, if there are kind of configuration settings for your theme, yeah, you can you can set them here. Um, lots of kind of um, uh, commercially available themes, and yeah, we'll have kind of lots of different options you can set. If you're writing a theme yourself, you may have less options. Um, people, this is, your, this is the users that are set up on the site. At the moment, there's only one user here. Um, modules is all the installed modules at the moment. You, you notice it's kind of grouped by core. Um, which we for some reason nice we can collapse it um, because we haven't added any, any any modules the only modules that are here are core and by default core has a load of modules enabled and it has a load of modules that are not enabled um, some of these modules are essentially just kind of different content types and stuff um, some of the modules you'll notice are well some of them are, are, are you know, not checked some of them are checked, but and, you know, and you can uh, you can work with them. Some the checkbox is ticked, but it's disabled. Um, if a module is required by something else, then you can't disable it until you've disabled the module that that it's dependent on. Until you've dis until you've disabled the module on, on which it is dependent, or whatever. Rearrange those words to make sense. To make sense. Um, so yeah, that's your module stuff. Configuration is anything to do with the actual, is kind of more the sort of bits and pieces around the site. You're gonna have things on performance in here, like you know, you're aggregating um, uh, JavaScript and CSS files and that kind of stuff and caching. Um, you have also got um, how you manage kind of images and search stuff and all sorts of different things like that. site information, so you can set the site title and all that kind of stuff in here. Uh, reports is various things on, you know, if you've got errors kind of throwing up on the site or just stuff that's been kind of going on. So it tells you when things are logged in, logged out, all that kind of stuff, content's created, etc. And help is just, yeah, basically help on how to use, how to use Drupal. Um, so we're going to come back to structure and look at these content types. So within content types, you currently have two: article, basic page. They came with the uh, came with the server came with the installation. So if we add a content type, we're going to call that news. You know, we're going to call it views, call it news. And it's got, and we're going to, it's called news. And the content can be, this is news content. Really quite boring, but never mind. Uh, so preview before submitting, optional, blah, blah, blah. We can set the default settings for these things. So if we wanted a content when you create it to not be published by default, we could set that kind of thing here. So you could have some content types that when you create them, they just automatically get published, some that don't automatically get published. It doesn't mean that there's um, you've got um, permissions based on that. It's just the default settings for those things. You can do permissions on that, but that's not what this is. This is just the default settings for stuff. We're just going to you know accept the rest of that stuff so that we can so that we can see it. The interesting thing with content types is, you know, we haven't really done much there, but if we if we look at the manage fields aspect of news, uh, we can see that it has a title and it has uh, it has a body. Now, if we go back back wherever it is to here and we look at the machine the uh, basic page we can see that also has title and body. It doesn't have anything else. If we look at article, then we'll see it has title 
body, same as before. It has tags, and it also allow, you can also add an image to it. Didn't even see the image. Let's see where that is. Home. Why am I not doing that? Why can't I edit that, that page? Read more. Let's have a look. Edit. I didn't even notice that. There's an image. You can add an image. Um, so our so so that's got four fields. Which basic page had had two. Um, if we go to our news uh, content type, we can add new fields on there if we wanted to. We could call it. We could add um, some of the things I think are automatically there, like author. But we could add um, uh, a subtitle if we wanted to, and we can set that to be a type text. Um, uh, it's going to be a text field. It's going to display that. Um, we can save that, and it'll ask a few settings about it. Um, it'll ask us again, load more details. Um, you can use, we can you reuse existing fields as well. So, um, if the if the image field that is associated with article, if I wanted to use the same type of field on here, I could just say I want to add an image field, and that's you're going to use the same field. I could also just to make things. And it'll then give me some specific things that make it particular to this content type. But I'm going to accept those kind of public ones just for the moment. I've now got an image field as well, and that's reusing the field from the other thing, um, from the other content type. I could add another image field if I wanted to, call it image2. Um, well, so that's an image. Um, I could do that, and that's going to be a separate one then. Um, if we save those settings and give them more stuff. Well, we can actually, if we want to, we can say the number of values that something can have is, we can say it's unlimited. If we do that, um, so this is this is kind of you know, just showing you how a couple of those kind of fields might work. If I um, now save that, it's already saved anyway, but we add content, we go to news. Note that I've got my image, so that looks the same as the one for the article. But no, I've also got one here, which is a little bit different. And I could add a file here, but it would just let me keep. It would let me keep adding new new files, more and more files. And note that I've also got the title body, and I've got that subtitle field here. And if I want to, I can go via the structure. I can go into content types. I can go into manage fields, and I can just drag subtitle to there. Now, when I go to um, add content and add news. Subtitle appears second in the list, so you can really rapidly build stuff like that. And in the database, you know, a lot of this stuff. If I refresh that, uh, you'll see there's things like uh, field. There's uh, tables for individual fields. So it's created my subtitle field. There's an image two field. No, there's um, there's one table for um, for the first image field, and that table gets used by the article content type and by the news content type now. Um, there's probably, I think, content type, there's probably kind of database tables in here for uh, content types as well. What can I type? Where is it? Come on. Come on, come on, come on. So we've got Node, which shows our two different types of kind of page, but it's got a Node type. So there you go. So we've got the, um, uh, no types where it shows the different uh, content types that we've created, and I'm assuming that perhaps uh, it doesn't have in Drupal 6, so there's a few more kind of content type kind of uh, tables. But here we've got, um, I imagine, maybe just the fields that are being used. Um, so you can use Drupal just straight out of the box to create all manner of different, different content types, um, which is uh, very powerful, do lots of things, um, and you can get lots of extensions to this, like there's um, uh, a email field. Um, so I don't think this is part of uh, core, but you can just add this module if you want to. It's just called, it's just called email. So um, I mentioned that I've got, I installed Drush on here. So Drush, you, know, you just run, run the command Drush. Because uh, this is a vagrant setup, um, the default kind of folder was slash vagrant. I'm now SSH in, in, into that into that vagrant VM that got set up. www was my working folder. That's my Drupal installation. 
can see those there. When in a Drupal installation, I can just type drush and I can then run commands on that installation. So I can run status. It tells me a little bit about um, that, that setup. Uh, so while I'm also here, I can also run any of the commands that are listed here. So I want to enable, I want to download and enable a module. So I'm going to, I'm going to install this email module. <clears throat> and all I need to do is take the name of the module, which is the bit at the end of the URL there. Um, so you know it's, it's, it's listed in the on the thing there as email field, but its project name is just email. Um, so I can just copy that. I can come back to the command line and I can just do drush. And we can see download is DL for the module and enable is EN. But I also know that if I try and enable a module that doesn't exist, it'll try and download it. Um, by default, it'll ask me if I want to 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 you know enable the module. Uh, we can force that by just using the dash yes. Uh, I don't know why I've managed to do that, but we'll get rid of that. That's not what I wanted. Um, what we wanted was the name of the project, which is that. So drush, enable, force, email project. That'll download the, the thing and, in, and set it up. Um, <clears throat> so there you go. It's downloaded it. It's enabled it. And we can see from that that it's downloaded it to Vagrant, World of Work, Sites, or Modules, Email. Uh, so it's put it in that all folder. It's within the sites folder. So the sites folder is where all of our stuff goes. We don't touch core. Everything goes into sites. In this case, it's going to all modules email. Uh, and now that the module's enabled, we should see, actually, if I go back to, um, what was that? That was my news one, wasn't it? So if we go to structure, go to content types, if I uh, manage fields there, um, there'll be a new field type here, which is email, which wasn't there before. I can't even, I should have checked that and sort of shown it to you, but I can guarantee that wasn't there before. But now you can add an email field type. So if we call that email, very imaginative. Um, and save, it's got no settings. So here we go, we're gonna accept all those, those settings. Um, and now when we go to content, um, add new content, news, it asks me for an email. Uh, and no doubt if I was to put in there test, and I was to put in here test, um, it might complain if I try and save that because it wants a valid email address. So it's basically just doing kind of validation for an email. So I can do test at test.com. Now it'll accept it because that's a you know, valid format email. So you've got the notion there of being able to install modules that extend stuff. So it's using the content types. We've created a new content type. We've added a new module that um, that extends that content type to give it more more functionality. And that's you know a good example of the kind of building blocks for Drupal. Um, I'm going to end this video there, um, and I think in the next uh, video we'll probably come on to. Uh, automating the creation of content and um, using views to uh, display some of that content.